Good morning, guys. So it is um, 8 a.m. We are going to be starting um, a series now on also the Jaguar S-Type. This one isn't um, just any old S-Type. It's a little dirty right now. Um, so I'm going to wash it. I'm going to do a drive review and then I will do a few mechanical things. I will show you how to do an oil change on one of these cars. It's incredibly easy. Um, and I'll show you what to look for when you are out to buy one of these because there is a few things that you need to um, look for. So to start off, this car, um, it has caught the ire of many, many people. And um, a lot of people will say that this car is um, not a true Jaguar, that this car um, just a Ford Taurus. Um, a lot of people will say that the build quality was poor. And um, my comment to um, anybody criticizing um, this car is that, well, show me any manufacturer in this car's competition that doesn't cut corners. Because I guarantee you the E39 BMW, they cut corners. What do you think the, um, and especially if you go with competition for this, because that would be the 540, which I have a 540, and we will be doing um, uh, review reconditioning video on that as well but um, the 540 it had its own issues what what do you think the uh, power steering leaks were and the coolant leaks and the oil leaks and the oil pan and the oil valley pan and I could go on and on and on and on and on so um, yes they did cut corners every manufacturer does it's just which corners can you deal with as a buyer? And also, what did the dealer do in their reconditioning process? So I'm a little bit more, th more thorough than other dealers just because I've been on the receiving end of um, getting a car that wasn't reconditioned as well as I had hoped, or maybe as well as the car had deserved, or even, I suppose, even as well as I deserved. So this car in particular is a 2003. It has, uh, I believe it just clicked 90,000 miles. It was a two owner car. And um, I love it. It has the AJ V8 engine, the 4.2. It is a 2003, so it's the first year of the refresh, and uh, which came with, it comes with the electrical system refresh. Um, also, this one, um, of course, why is it, every time I go to make a video, someone walks by with some sort of, hold please, all right, so there was a number of areas that the um, the S-Type was criticized on, and one was actually the tail end, and this line that came right there that swooped downward. So that they designed that into the car um, in order to arc back to, um, and I think it was the E-Type. And people also criticized this right here for being squished. Um, what I do in order to um, kind of mitigate that is I tint the um, taillights ever so slightly so that they bring out the chrome work and the chrome work will just make the tail of the car look better. And the taillights actually look way better with um, actually, it, well, this color of car, it looks really nice on. So another area that um, this car was criticized on was the interior. And um, we can take a look real quick. This car is super dirty. I haven't washed it. So that's coming up next. So here we have the interior of the S-Type. 
So me personally, I absolutely love this wood. This wood in contrast with black interior. I think it looks unique. You never see anything like it on the road. And um, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's stunning. But what I will say is if you look in the places on the wood where the sun doesn't usually touch, you're gonna notice something. So here, if you look, it's dark. The wood is darker right there. So it's darker here and it's darker all along this little ledge here. And then it's also darker in here. So what that means is this wood was actually a darker veneer. And throughout the years, over the years, the veneer, um, it bleached. How cool would it have been to have a dark wood um, on this interior? Because it is a stunning interior. Now, they do have their shortcomings in the interiors. Um, I have had to, oh. okay, let me show you guys that before. So I have had to um, replace a few things um, in these interiors sometimes. So the um, A pillars, these tend, the, the fabric will sag if they get any sort of oil on them. And then up here, this one is even doing it, these cracks right there in the plastic, um, every single S-type that I've had in inventory ever has had, um, and it just, it happens all of a sudden and it just, all of it goes. Um, so that just popped up, I just noticed it this morning. Um, otherwise, here, maybe if I get back here. So otherwise, there's not a whole lot that I don't like about the interior. The leather is beautiful. The wood, the contrast of the wood and the um, and the black leather is amazing. Um, the navigation screen, actually, it's not all that bad. The early touchscreen, for being a 2003, the touchscreen is good. I mean, I don't have any issues with it. Um, you can access the uh, climate control here through the touchscreen. Um, uh, never mind my red blinking light. Um, and so everything can be accessed through through the touchscreen. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Hey, at least the at least the um, the little air conditioner mover things um, don't break off. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I don't see anything really to complain about. I've sold many, I've sold many S-types and I would say actually 99% of my customers with, with S-types come back just for maintenance. That's it. Every once in a while, um, it's squeaky breaks, but I'll, we're gonna go over um, why that happens and how to fix it. Um, so this particular car has the, I have not cleaned this in a long time, um, has the 4.2 V8. And um, so the difference between the 4.0 and the 4.2 is that, well, aside from the displacement, <clears throat> the expansion tank here is on the 4.2. On the 4.0, it was here. And that's where this little circle is cut out. Um, on the 4.0, the intake tube came back here and it came and it wrapped around to the same spot there. Um, so they changed the positioning of the um, throttle body, which to be completely honest, once this uh, cover is off, it really crowds the um, the thermostat housing, and if you ever have to replace the thermostat housing and or the uh, water pump, it's a holy nightmare because of the um, the throttle body. And I, if I remember correctly, it's actually a liquid cooled throttle body. If I I might be wrong, um, I but I don't think I'm wrong. I think that it is, if I remember correctly. Um, and then okay, so your power steering fluid is right there. Here's your air filter. 
course that's your brake fluid. Here's your coolant. This coolant should be a pink coolant. Um, here is your windshield washer fluid. That's pretty much it. Your oil dipstick is right here. Sorry for flipping you guys off. It's right there. And then your oil filler is there. Um, we might do some maintenance on this car. Um, like I said, it's it's been an inventory a second. So, um, I mean, maybe we'll do an oil change. I feel like I just did one, um, but we can, It of course, it's about months and um, and not really miles when the car has been sitting. So um, we're gonna get that all taken care of. This particular car, which is a little uncommon, com comes with the um, Xenon um, HID lamps, which is nice. Um, so again, back to what to look for on these cars. So here, the expansion tank crack. I've had them crack here along the seam, but I've also had them crack down the side. Um, I attribute it to the type of coolant they use. It should be a pink. And we'll do a startup and exhaust sound on it. Um, and then after we're done detailing it, when I go to take pictures again, because I'm retaking pictures and redoing all of my advertising, um, we will do the drive review and the feel and my rant on why I like the V8 S-types, not the six cylinders. Don't buy the Ford Taurus six cylinder at all. This car is not on a, on a Ford Taurus frame. It's actually on a Jaguar, um, on a Jaguar frame, but, um, they did use the four, uh, or the three point, the Ford Taurus 3.0, uh, the Duratec 3.3.0, which Jaguar tweaked just a little bit, um, with the variable valve timing. And then also, um, the induction, they, they kind of tweaked a little bit with, um, it just, it didn't really, it didn't do anything to it still sounds the same it's boring as shit no power it's gonna leak oil all over the place it's a ford taurus 3.0 so yeah here we go detail Okay, so the camera died on me. Um, so, I'm just about done. I just got to do the windows, but what I always do when I first start drying, and I know that there's going to be some uh, detail guys out there, they're going to be like, you're doing that all ass backwards. Uh, probably, but I'm doing it the way that works for me. <coughs> and what works for me is um, to initially start on all the lines of the car, the car, uh, what the lines that make the car stand out. So I always start um, here 
and then I do the hood and then usually I'll do the trunk and I go on the other side and I do the same and then I come back around and uh, and finish it up so um, I don't know why it's what I've always done I always leave the windows for last um, we're just about at the windows now the good thing is it's not hot outside so um, so I can video right now and not get uh, water spots um, so also I pay attention to first and foremost all the chrome work um, that way if there's any water that that remains on the chrome work as I'm drying the rest of the car um, I can come back later after it's all drained off and not get any um, water streaks or spots so I, I pay special attention always to um, kitten <laughs> always kittens the one that gets um, all of the polishing first all of the drying and and uh, everything first and then I do um, on these I do the chrome work there the grill and then I usually will do um, around the windows and then of course the lines of the car so this one that goes back like that tailpipes I always wait for last um, these ones we're actually going to um, we're actually going to detail them uh, with some metal polisher because I, I haven't done that yet on this car I always do because it kind of makes it makes the car um, it's how they're supposed to look so like here there's a little bit of water under there so um, that's why I do this this part or the chrome work first because I want the water to um, dry before I go back over it. <clears throat> oh, funny thing about these um, uh, these chrome pieces, one of the reasons why I really hate the X-Type is because um, the one that I bought, it was a black one, it had like 60,000 miles, I think. Um, it had some sport package, and chrome rims, it was so pretty. <clears throat> so I'm, dry, or I'm uh, spraying it off with the, with the power washer and this one over here, that chrome piece, flies off. And I think, oh, you know, oh, eh, it happens. And so I go, I'm, you know, wash it, go back over it with the power washer, and that part falls down. And I'm like, this bitch. So as I'm drying the car, um, the one here falls off. And that's when I was like, okay, this is, I can see how this is going to go. And the, uh, and the leaper kind of goes, Pow! so that car, um, I, yeah, I replaced those parts and at first just replaced those parts and kind of pushed forward through reconditioning. And one day, um, I got in the car to move it. And as I closed the door, the driver's side mirror fell off. And I was just over it. I had to sit there for a few minutes to keep myself from getting very angry. So um, this car, I mean, who doesn't love these lines here? Boop, boop. And what I like the most about it is you can tell where it was sculpted into the, oh, I can't find it. I can't do it. Oh, there we are. You can tell where it was sculpted into the hood, right there. Oh, sexy. It's the curves. The curves make it. All right, guys, so we are all done with our wash um, of the Jag of this Jaguar S-Type. Um, I actually ceramic coated this car about ooh, six months ago. Um, 
so it doesn't need any other work right now i might put a detail spray on it um but there we are it's such a nice color i had two of these at one time i might these have been refinished i might actually polish them but let's see there we are so uh, i looked at what i used to wash the car and i used chemical guys glassworks wash i used it in the foam cannon and then just in the bucket that I had my um, wash mitt in, I used the hybrid radiant finish um, soap and I didn't use a whole lot um, in the dilution, but there we are. There we go. So when I said that I went over all of the um, chrome work, I didn't mean just on the outside. I also will go over the chrome work on the inside and just wipe it down to get any fingerprints off of it as well as the wood. Um, and I mean, I'm sure you guys saw that in the, in the uh, time warp. So here we go. And maybe we will do a little bit of a... Um, driving review. I I do plan on changing the tires on this car because I really don't like them. They're not sporty enough. Um, I mean, I'm super biased when it comes to my tires. So we're actually going to put... Oh, I didn't put a little tag on it, but I believe we're going to put these. So these are the Nitto Neogens, and um, I'm just really biased when it comes to tires. Uh, so I hope that you um, enjoyed this and I will see you on the drive review.